I stepped out of the transport, my boots crunching on the alien soil. The ground felt unfamiliar, not like the simulated terrains we had trained on. Around me, the colony sprawled, a haphazard blend of advanced technology and survivalist pragmatism. Structures of metal and composite materials stood alongside shelters fashioned from local resources. The settlement buzzed with activity. Colonists moved about, engrossed in their tasks, their faces set with a determination that comes from knowing there's no turning back. Commander Mitchell stood beside me, his gaze surveying the landscape with pride and caution. Welcome to New Oasis, he said, his voice carrying a weight that seemed to echo the importance of our mission. Your new home. I nodded, taking in the expanse of our new world. The horizon was a panorama of alien geography, hills that rolled like waves frozen in time, and plants that twisted towards the sky in spirals of vibrant colours. My eyes drifted to the dark forests that bordered our settlement. The trees were tall, their bark reflecting a metallic luster under the light of the planet's twin moons. The canopy was dense, casting deep shadows that seemed to swallow the light. Something about those forests sent a chill down my spine. It wasn't just their strangeness, but something more. A notion of being scrutinized by unseen eyes, a perception of ancient secrets hidden beneath the foliage. I couldn't shake the feeling that those woods held more than just exotic flora. As the sun began to set, the unease grew. The forest seemed to inch closer, the darkness deepening, swallowing the light. I found myself taking a step back, an instinctive reaction to an unknown threat. Commander Mitchell noticed my discomfort. It takes some getting used to, he said, his tone understanding yet firm. But remember, this planet is ours to tame. Whatever's out there, we'll face it, together. I forced a nod, trying to push away the unease. Tonight I would rest in my new quarters, but something told me sleep would not come easy. The mystery of those dark forests beckoned, and I knew sooner or later we would have to face whatever secrets they held. Life in New Oasis was a blend of rigorous routine and uncharted challenges. Each day began with the rising of the twin moons, casting a surreal glow over the colony. We operated on a strict schedule, our tasks ranging from construction and farming to scientific research and security patrols. I quickly found my place among the team responsible for ecological assessments. Our job was to understand the alien flora and fauna, to ensure the colony's expansion didn't disrupt the planet's ecosystem more than necessary. It was during these explorations that I first felt a real connection to New Oasis, a sense of wonder at its alien beauty. Key characters in the colony began to stand out. There was Dr. Naomi Reed, the lead biologist, whose fascination with alien life was as infectious as it was relentless. She spent hours studying the samples we collected, her eyes always alight with curiosity and excitement. Then there was Carlos Alvarez, head of security, a man as tough as the reinforced steel of our shelters. His stern demeanor was softened only by his evident care for the safety of every colonist. I often found him scanning the horizon, his eyes lingering on the dark forests, a look of concern hidden beneath his stoic exterior. Among the colonists, there was also Bella, a communications specialist. Her job was to maintain our link with Earth and ensure the smooth operation of internal communications. Her warm smile and quick wit made the long days more bearable. We formed a fast friendship, often sharing meals and stories of our lives back on Earth. One evening, as the twin moons hung low, a sense of discomfort gripped the colony. A scout team sent to the edge of the dark forests for routine mapping had not returned. As hours passed, worry turned to fear. Carlos organized search parties, his face set in a grim line. I volunteered, driven by concern and the unshakable feeling that whatever mystery the forests held was now reaching out to us. As we approached the towering trees, that feeling of being observed returned stronger than ever. We found the scout team's equipment scattered near the forest's edge, but of the team there was no sign. It looked like they had left in a hurry, 
or worse, been taken. The forest loomed before us, its darkness more profound, more threatening. Carlos ordered us to retreat, to regroup and plan a proper search at first light. As we left, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching us depart, hidden in the shadows of New Oasis's dark forests. The disappearance of the scout team sent ripples of fear through New Oasis. Sleepless nights became the norm as speculation grew wilder. The colony's morale now trembled on the edge of panic. Dr. Reed tried to keep her team focused on research, but the shadow of concern was evident in her usually bright eyes. We need to understand what we're dealing with, she insisted during our team meetings. Her dedication to unravelling the planet's mysteries had taken on a new urgency. Carlos, meanwhile, tightened security measures. Patrols were doubled, and the perimeter of the colony was reinforced with additional sensors and lighting. He trained us in basic combat, his sessions rigorous and demanding. We don't know if we're dealing with an animal, a natural hazard, or something else, he said, his voice hard as steel. But we will be prepared. Bella's attempts to maintain a semblance of normalcy were commendable. She organized social events to lift spirits and ensure the flow of communication within the colony remained open and honest. Yet, even her bright laughter couldn't completely dispel the growing sense of dread. It was during one of our ecological surveys, a few days after the disappearance, that we had our first encounter. We were collecting soil samples near the forest when a sudden sharp cry pierced the air. Turning towards the sound, we saw one of our team members, Jenna, standing frozen, her eyes wide with terror. Before her stood a being like nothing we had ever seen. It was humanoid but slender to the point of emaciation, its skin a translucent grey, veins visible beneath. Its eyes were large, black orbs devoid of any discernible emotion. It stood eerily still, its gaze locked on Jenna. We were paralysed, fear and fascination holding us in place. Dr. Reed whispered, Don't provoke it. Observe. But before we could react, the creature moved with startling speed. It placed a hand on Jenna's forehead, and she let out a guttural scream before collapsing. The being turned towards us, then vanished into the forest. Rushing to Jenna, we found her alive but unresponsive. Her eyes were open, staring at nothing, her face an empty mask. She didn't respond to her name or any stimuli. Whatever that creature had done, it had left her a hollow shell. We carried Jenna back to the colony, the weight of what happened heavy on our shoulders. This wasn't just a missing team now. We were dealing with an unknown entity capable of... What? stealing a person's essence, their memories. The incident with Jenna and the mysterious beings sent a shockwave through the colony. The harsh reality of our situation had finally set in. We were not alone on New Oasis, and our neighbours were far from friendly. In the medical bay, Jenna lay motionless, her condition unchanged. Dr. Reed, along with the medical team, ran tests and scans, but the results were always the same. Physically, she was healthy, but mentally, it was as if she was no longer there. It's like her memories have been erased. Dr. Reed said, her voice filled with fear and scientific fascination. Carlos's response was more pragmatic. He increased the security protocols, establishing a curfew and organizing armed patrols around the clock. We don't know what we're dealing with, he addressed the colony, but we will not be caught off guard. Fear and uncertainty had replaced the initial excitement of colonizing a new world. I noticed groups forming, each with their own theory about the beings and how we should deal with them. Some argued for a peaceful approach to try and communicate with the beings, while others, fueled by fear, called for aggressive action. It was during this time of turmoil that Commander Mitchell called for a meeting. Gathered in the main hall, we listened as he laid out the situation. We have two priorities, he began, his voice steady. First, to ensure the safety and well-being of every person in this colony. Second, to understand these beings, their intentions, and how to coexist with them. 
He proposed a two-pronged approach, a defensive strategy led by Carlos to safeguard the colony and an exploratory team led by Dr. Reed to gather more information about the beings. I volunteered for the latter, driven by a need to understand what had happened to Jenna and prevent it from happening to others. As the colony braced itself, the two teams set out with their distinct missions. The defensive team, under Carlos's stern leadership, fortified the colony. Walls were strengthened and surveillance systems were enhanced. Every able-bodied person received basic combat training. The atmosphere was tense. Carlos's team moved with intent, their actions driven by the primal instinct to protect. Meanwhile, the exploratory team, led by Dr. Reed, prepared for their foray into the unknown. Our goal was to gather information, to understand the beings that had so profoundly affected Jenna. We were a group of scientists, ecologists, and a few security members, including myself. Our gear was less about combat and more about research, scanners, sample containers, and recording devices. Before dawn, we set out towards the forest. The air was cool, the twin moons providing a dim light. Every step seemed to echo, every rustle of the leaves felt amplified. The forest, with its towering metallic trees and thick underbrush, felt like another world. The exploration started methodically. We collected samples and recorded observations, maintaining constant communication with the colony. Dr. Reed was in her element, her fascination momentarily overshadowing the underlying fear. But as we ventured deeper, the forest grew darker, the canopy dense enough to block out the moon's light. It was then that we stumbled upon a clearing. In its center lay the remains of what looked like a campsite, but it was old, overgrown with vegetation. Scattered around were items that sent a chill down my spine a tattered piece of fabric from a colonist's uniform, a broken communication device, remnants that spoke of a desperate struggle. The discovery hit us hard. The implications were clear. We were not the first humans to set foot on this planet. The remnants suggested others had been here before us, possibly from a previous unrecorded expedition. Dr. Reed examined the items, her expression turning from scientific curiosity to concern. We need to report this immediately, she said, her voice tense. As we prepared to leave, a sudden movement caught our attention. From the shadows of the trees emerged a figure, its features obscured by the dim light. For a moment we froze, unsure whether we were facing one of the beings or something else. The figure stepped into the light, revealing itself to be a human, but barely recognisable. His features were gaunt, his eyes hollow. He looked at us, his lips moving, but no sound came out. Before we could react, he collapsed, his body convulsing. We rushed to his aid, but it was too late. His lifeless eyes stared up at the alien sky. Back at the colony, the news of our discovery hit like a meteor. The revelation that others had been on New Oasis and what had become of at least one of them stirred a whirlwind of emotions among the colonists. Fear and sorrow were mingled with a growing sense of urgency. If there were survivors out there, we had a duty to find and help them. The colony's leadership convened an emergency meeting, with Commander Mitchell presiding. The hall, usually a place for communal meals and meetings, was tense with anticipation. As members of the exploratory team, we presented our findings, the tattered uniform, the broken device, and the tragic end of the unknown man. Dr. Reed, her usual scientific detachment shaken, spoke first. We're dealing with the aftermath of what appears to be a failed mission, one that we knew nothing about. Carlos was next. Our priority is the safety of this colony, he insisted. Any rescue operation has to be well planned and equipped. We don't know what dangers are out there, besides the memory-consuming beings. The debate that followed was heated. Some argued for immediate action, a rescue mission to find any other survivors. Others cautioned against rash decisions, suggesting we gather more information before venturing out again. 
the fear of the unknown entity loomed large in every argument. It was Commander Mitchell who made the final call. We will organize a rescue mission, he declared, but it will be carefully planned with volunteers only. We cannot ignore the possibility of other survivors, but we also cannot risk the safety of the entire colony. The meeting ended with a call for volunteers. I stepped forward without hesitation, as did several others, including Bella. Her determination mirrored my own. We were rescuers in a land that was becoming more mysterious and dangerous by the day. Preparations began immediately. The rescue team was a group of security personnel, scientists and medics. We were equipped with the best gear the colony could provide, communication devices, medical supplies and, crucially, weapons for defence. Carlos took charge of our training, turning us into a unit capable of facing whatever awaited us in the depths of New Oasis's forests. As we trained, the colony buzzed around us. Everyone contributed in whatever way they could, building supplies, preparing food, offering words of encouragement. As dawn broke over New Oasis, the rescue team assembled at the edge of the colony. We checked our equipment one last time, communication devices, medical kits, and, unavoidably, weapons. Our mission was rescue, but we were acutely aware of the potential dangers that lay ahead. Carlos, leading the team, gave a final briefing. His words were a blend of caution and encouragement. Stay alert, stay together and keep communication lines open. We don't know what we'll find out there, but we're the best chance any survivors have. Dr. Reed added her piece, focusing on the scientific aspect. Observe everything. We still need to understand this planet and its inhabitants. Knowledge could be our best defence. Bella, standing beside me, looked determined yet pensive. She clutched her communicator like a lifeline, knowing that maintaining our link with the colony was crucial. We exchanged a look, a silent promise to watch out for each other. As we stepped into the forest, the change in atmosphere was immediate. The trees loomed over us, their strange metallic bark reflecting the morning light in eerie patterns. The underbrush was thick, slowing our progress and adding to the sense of entering a different world. The forest was alive with sounds, the rustling of leaves, the occasional snap of a twig, the distant calls of alien wildlife. But underlying it all was a silence, a sense that the forest itself was watching, waiting. We moved in a tight formation, Carlos at the front, eyes constantly scanning the surroundings. Dr. Reed and her team took samples and made observations, their scientific curiosity undimmed by the situation. Hours passed, and the forest seemed to stretch endlessly. We found traces of passage, broken branches, footprints, but no concrete signs of survivors. The sense of urgency grew with each step. Time was not a luxury we had. As the twin moons began their ascent, casting their dim light through the canopy, we stumbled upon a startling sight. In a small clearing lay the wreckage of what appeared to be a spacecraft, overgrown with vegetation, but still recognisable. Its design was unfamiliar, not matching any models from our colony or Earth's known expeditions. Carlos signalled for a halt, his expression turning from surprise to wariness. Stay sharp, he whispered. This could be a significant discovery or a potential trap. We approached the wreckage cautiously, scanning for any signs of life or danger. Dr. Reed and her team moved methodically, documenting every fragment, every burn mark. The design was advanced. It suggested a technological sophistication that was both intriguing and alarming. As we investigated further, Bella's communicator crackled to life. Team Alpha, this is New Oasis Colony. Do you copy? The voice was tense, urgent. Carlos responded immediately. This is Team Alpha. Go ahead, New Oasis. There's been an incident at the colony. The perimeter sensors have been triggered. We have possible movement in the forest. Be on high alert. The message sent a jolt of adrenaline through the team. We were not alone. The beings, or whatever had triggered the sensors, were close. 
Carlos signaled us to form a defensive perimeter around the wreckage site. Weapons were drawn, eyes scanning the dense foliage. The forest, which had been alive with alien sounds, fell silent. Then, without warning, they emerged. The beings, like the one we had encountered before, were humanoid, but disturbingly alien. Their translucent skin, their large, emotionless eyes, and their swift, silent movements made them seem like phantoms. They didn't attack immediately, but stood at the edge of the clearing, watching us with an unnerving stillness. Dr. Reed whispered, Try not to provoke them. We need to understand. Her words were cut short as one of the beings lunged forward with startling speed. Its target was clear. The wreckage. Carlos acted instantly, firing a warning shot. The sound shattered the silence, bouncing through the forest. The shot seemed to trigger them. More of the beings appeared, moving with an eerie coordination. We were outnumbered and the realization hit us like a wave. Carlos shouted orders, his voice steady despite the chaos. Fall back! Protect the scientists! The battle was chaotic. The beings were fast, their movements almost a blur. They seemed to be trying to reach the wreckage, not attacking us directly unless obstructed. We fired shots, some finding their mark, but it was like trying to fight shadows. Amidst the gunfire and confusion, I caught a glimpse of Bella, her communicator in hand desperately relaying information to the colony. The turning point came when Dr. Reed, risking her own safety, moved closer to the beings. Wait! she shouted. We're not here to harm you! To our astonishment, the beings paused, their heads tilting slightly, as if considering her words. It was a brief respite, a moment of uncertain peace in the midst of chaos. But it was shattered by a sudden scream. One of the beings had reached a team member who had strayed too far from the group. The creature's hand was on his forehead, and in seconds he collapsed, just like Jenna had. The brief pause was over. The beings resumed their advance, more aggressive now. Carlos's voice cut through the air. Retreat! Now! We fell back, carrying our fallen comrade, the sounds of the beings haunting our retreat. As we escaped the clearing, the forest seemed to swallow the wreckage and the beings, hiding them from view. The return to New Oasis Colony was a somber procession. We were a team shadowed by defeat, carrying the weight of a comrade reduced to a shell. The colony felt like a fortress under siege. Upon our arrival, the impact of our battered state rippled through the colonists. Faces lined with concern and fear greeted us, their eyes filled with questions and dread. We had ventured out as representatives of their hopes. We returned as harbingers of a dark reality. In the medical bay, our afflicted team member was laid beside Jenna. The medical staff, looking equally puzzled and concerned, worked to make them comfortable. Their condition was unchanged, alive yet absent, a mystery that deepened the fear within the colony. That evening, a meeting was convened in the main hall. Commander Mitchell, his face marked with the day's toll, addressed the crowd. Today, we've faced a truth that we cannot ignore. These beings, these Memory thieves, as some have started calling them, are a threat to our very existence on this planet. Our defensive measures will be increased. No one is to venture beyond the colony without an armed escort. We're at war, whether we like it or not. Dr. Reed, her scientist's curiosity now overshadowed by the grim reality, added her perspective. We need to understand these beings. There's a pattern, a purpose to their actions, we must study the incident, learn from it. The discussions that followed were heated and fragmented. Some colonists argued for a more aggressive stance against the beings, while others pleaded for a cautious approach, fearing further provocation. The colony was divided on the nature of our presence on New Oasis. As the meeting dispersed, Bella approached me. Her face, usually so full of life, was drawn and tired. What do we do now? she asked her voice barely above a whisper. I had no answer. The certainty I once felt about our mission, about our place on this planet, had been shaken. That night, as I lay in my bunk, 
The faces of Jenna and our comrade haunted my thoughts. We had come to New Oasis, seeking a new beginning, but had instead found ourselves in a struggle for survival, against an enemy we barely understood. Life in New Oasis Colony took on a new rhythm, one marked by vigilance and a sense of collective responsibility. The once vibrant and exploratory atmosphere of the colony was now infused with a survivalist edge. As part of the increased defensive measures, watchtowers were erected along the perimeter, equipped with powerful lights and scanning technology. Patrols were more frequent, with colonists taking turns to stand guard, their eyes scanning the horizon for any sign of the memory thieves. The colony's scientists, led by Dr. Reed, dedicated themselves to analyzing the data gathered from the first encounter with the memory thieves. In the lab, they pored over every piece of footage, every recorded observation, seeking patterns or weaknesses. I found myself in a state of introspection, grappling with the harsh realities we faced. The excitement of discovery, which had fueled my passion for this mission, was now overshadowed by the need to protect and survive. My conversations with Bella became more reflective, our discussions a blend of strategy and concern for our future on this planet. It was during one of these discussions that a breakthrough came. Bella, while analysing the colony's communication logs, noticed an anomaly. Look at this, she said, pointing to the screen. There's a pattern in the interference that occurs whenever the memory thieves are near. This discovery led to a new strategy. Dr. Reed theorized that the beings might be sensitive or even vulnerable to certain frequencies. The team quickly set to work, developing a device that could emit a range of frequencies, hoping to find one that could repel or incapacitate the memory thieves. The development of this device brought a renewed sense of direction to the colony. Engineers and scientists worked alongside each other. Within days, a prototype was ready for field testing. We don't know how the memory thieves will react to this, Carlos cautioned as he demonstrated the device. Stay alert and stick to the plan. Our objective is to test its effectiveness without engaging them directly if possible. The training was intense. A blend of theoretical knowledge and practical application. We practiced various scenarios from defensive formations to quick retreats, always with the device at the center of our strategy. Dr. Reed provided insights into potential behavioural patterns of the memory thieves, which helped in strategizing our approach. As the day of the field test approached, the mood in the colony was cautious and tense. Bella, always a source of moral support, kept the team's spirits up. We've come this far, she said, and we're not going to back down now. Let's see what this thing can do. Equipped and ready, we set out towards the forest. The device was carried at the front. The forest loomed ahead, its dark canopy a sign of the unknown we were about to confront. We entered the forest, the device activated. It emitted a low hum, a sound that seemed almost unnatural in the quiet of the alien woods. We moved in a tight formation, our senses heightened, every rustle of leaves causing us to tense. As we ventured deeper, the silence around us grew. The usual sounds of alien wildlife were absent. We all felt it. A sense of impending confrontation. A test of our resolve and our technology. Suddenly, the device's hum intensified. A clear indication of the memory thief's proximity. We braced ourselves, eyes scanning the dense foliage. And then they appeared, emerging from the shadows with their eerie, silent grace. The memory thieves paused at the edge of the clearing, their black eyes seeming to assess the situation. The device's hum grew louder, and we saw the beings react for the first time. They recoiled slightly, a hint of what could be discomfort or confusion. Encouraged by this response, we increased the device's frequency. The memory thieves' reaction was immediate and more pronounced. They retreated further into the forest their movements suggesting a clear aversion to the sound. The team exchanged looks of cautious triumph. The device was working. We had found a weakness, a way to repel these beings. But the victory was short-lived. Without warning, the device faltered, 
its hum dying down to a faint whisper. In that moment of vulnerability, the memory thief surged forward, their retreat turning into an offensive. We were caught off guard, the sudden shift from testing to real danger sending a rush of adrenaline through the team. Carlos shouted orders, Fall back! Keep them at a distance! We retreated, firing warning shots, trying to maintain a perimeter. The memory thieves advanced relentlessly, their movements more aggressive than before. In the chaos, I saw Bella, her communicator, in hand, relaying our situation back to the colony. Her voice was steady, but her eyes mirrored the fear we all felt. We managed to retreat out of the forest, the memory thieves halting at its edge as if unwilling or unable to venture beyond the tree line. Back at the colony, the mood was somber. The initial success of the device had given way to a stark realization. We had provoked the memory thieves, and our understanding of them remained limited. The colony's leadership convened to reassess the situation and devise a new plan of action. In the meeting, tensions ran high. We need a new approach, Commander Mitchell stated firmly. Something that doesn't just temporarily repel these beings, but helps us understand them better. Dr. Reed proposed a bold, albeit risky, plan. We need to capture one of them, she said. It's the only way we can study them closely, understand their biology, and possibly find a way to communicate. Carlos, though hesitant, acknowledged the potential benefits of such a plan. If we do this, we need to be extremely careful. We can't afford any more casualties. The plan was set into motion. A small, highly skilled team was assembled for the mission to the forest, equipped with specialized containment units designed by the engineers. I volunteered, driven by the need to contribute to our understanding of the memory thieves. The memory thieves had shown intelligence and adaptability, and we knew this mission would not be easy. We moved stealthily using a combination of the modified frequency device and visual cues to track a solitary being. After hours of tracking, we located one. It was alone, its movements slow and deliberate. The plan was to encircle it quietly and then use a combination of the frequency device and tranquilizers to subdue it. The being seemed unaware of our presence until the last moment. Just as we closed in, it turned sharply its large black eyes locking onto ours. There was a moment of mutual recognition, a shared awareness that was unsettling. We activated the device and the being recoiled, but this time it didn't retreat. Instead, it let out a piercing sound, a call that resonated through the forest. Within moments, more of them appeared, emerging from the shadows like wraiths. The situation escalated quickly, we were outnumbered and surrounded. Carlos's voice crackled through the communicator. Abort! Get out of there now! The retreat was chaotic. We fired tranquilizers, hoping to slow them down, but their advance was relentless. In the confusion, I saw a team member get too close, and in an instant, the familiar scene unfolded. The memory thief reached out, and the colonist collapsed. Another victim claimed... We barely made it out of the forest, the memory thieves halting their pursuit at its edge as before. Back at the colony, the mood was one of desperation and defeat. The attempt to capture a memory thief had not only failed, but had cost us another team member. Commander Mitchell, in a bid to rally the colony, organized a series of meetings to discuss our next steps. We've faced challenges before, he said, his voice steady. And we'll face this one. We cannot let fear dictate our future on this planet. A breakthrough came unexpectedly from Dr. Reed's team. While analyzing the data from our encounters with the memory thieves, they had noticed a pattern. Their reactions vary depending on the frequency emitted, Dr. Reed explained. It's not just about repelling them. It's about finding a frequency that disorients them long enough for us to act. Armed with this new insight, the engineers and scientists worked to modify the frequency device. The goal was to create a weapon that could incapacitate the memory thieves, giving us a much-needed advantage. As the modified device was being tested, 
a sense of cautious optimism spread through the colony. The test results were promising. The new frequency not only repelled the memory thieves, but seemed to temporarily paralyze them. With this new weapon, a plan was formulated for a decisive stand against the memory thieves. Carlos led the charge, organizing a team of volunteers. This is our chance to turn the tide, he declared. We strike at dawn. The night before the operation was restless. Many of us, myself included, lay awake, contemplating the uncertain future. The thought of what lay ahead was daunting, but the possibility of regaining some semblance of control over our destiny on New Oasis spurred us on. Dawn broke with a sense of impending confrontation. The team, armed with the modified frequency devices, moved towards the forest. As we reached the forest, the devices were activated. The familiar hum filled the air, this time with a more potent resonance. We advanced cautiously, the memory thieves emerging to confront us as expected. At the first sign of their approach, the devices were deployed at full power. The effect was immediate and dramatic. The memory thieves halted, visibly disoriented, their bodies seizing in response to the frequencies. Seizing the moment, we pressed forward, pushing the memory thieves back, deeper into the forest. For the first time since our arrival on New Oasis, we felt a sense of control, a victory within our grasp. But the victory came at a cost. In the midst of the operation, a group of memory thieves, seemingly resistant to the frequencies, launched a counterattack. The ensuing struggle was fierce and chaotic. Despite our best efforts, we suffered casualties, brave colonists who sacrificed themselves to protect the rest. We had achieved a significant victory, pushing back the memory thieves and establishing a new line of defense. In the days following our hard-won victory, New Oasis Colony found itself in a state of cautious recalibration. The success of the operation had instilled a renewed sense of hope. Commander Mitchell convened a meeting to discuss the future strategy of the colony. We've shown that we can defend ourselves, but we can't let our guard down. We need to be proactive, to understand this planet and its inhabitants better, he asserted. Meanwhile, Dr. Reed's team made an unexpected breakthrough. During a routine analysis of the forest's soil and flora, they discovered anomalies in the genetic makeup of the plants near the memory thief's territory. These aren't natural variations, Dr. Reed explained excitedly. It's almost as if these plants have been genetically modified. This revelation prompted a new line of investigation. The possibility that the memory thieves, or perhaps another entity on the planet, were capable of manipulating the ecosystem was both fascinating and unsettling. It raised questions about the true nature of New Oasis and its original inhabitants. Carlos organized a specialized team to explore the area where the modified plants were found. I joined the team driven by a need to understand the broader implications of this discovery. Bella, armed with her communication equipment, was also part of the team, her role crucial in keeping us connected with the colony. As we ventured deeper into the forest, the changes in the vegetation became more pronounced. The plants were not just genetically different, they were structurally more complex. In the midst of this exploration, we stumbled upon something that would change our perception of New Oasis forever. Hidden beneath an overgrowth of alien foliage, we found the remains of what appeared to be an ancient structure. The structure was partially ruined, but its geometric patterns and the remnants of sophisticated materials indicated an advanced civilization. This, this is incredible, Dr. Reed whispered, her eyes wide with curiosity. We are not the first intelligent beings to inhabit this planet. The discovery sent a wave of excitement and apprehension through the team. If there had been an advanced civilization on New Oasis, what had become of them? And what connection, if any, did they have with the memory thieves? We documented the site, taking care not to disturb anything. The return to New Oasis colony with news of the ancient structure sparked a whirlwind of activity and speculation. The revelation of a previous advanced civilization on the planet opened a Pandora's box of questions and theories. 
In a hastily arranged assembly, our team presented the findings to the colonists. Images of the strange geometric patterns and the advanced materials from the ruins were displayed. Dr. Reed took the lead in explaining the consequences. This discovery suggests that New Oasis was once home to a sophisticated society. The question now is what happened to them, and how does this relate to the memory thieves? Commander Mitchell addressed the security concerns. This discovery changes our understanding of the planet. We must proceed with caution, ensuring the safety of the colony while we explore this new aspect of New Oasis. The mood in the colony shifted. There was a sense of being part of something greater, a story that spanned beyond our immediate struggle for survival. But there was also fear of the unknown, of what such a discovery could mean for our future on the planet. Carlos, meanwhile, tightened the security protocols around the colony and the newly discovered site. We don't know if this civilization was peaceful or not, or what defenses they might have left behind, he cautioned. In the following days, an expedition was organized to further explore the ruins. I volunteered, driven by a deepening need to understand the history of New Oasis. Bella, along with a team of scientists and security personnel, joined the expedition. As we explored the ruins, we uncovered more evidence of a once thriving civilization. There were remnants of what could have been dwellings, public spaces, and even what appeared to be technological devices, though their function was beyond our understanding. The breakthrough came when we discovered a series of murals. The artwork depicted scenes of life on New Oasis, showing beings remarkably similar to the memory thieves living alongside the advanced civilization. It painted a picture of coexistence, perhaps even collaboration. The murals also depicted a cataclysmic event, a series of natural disasters, followed by scenes of conflict and chaos. The final mural was the most chilling. It showed the beings that resembled the memory thieves, but their eyes were different, filled with what could only be interpreted as sadness and loss. This discovery led to a profound realization. The memory thieves might not be the aggressors we had thought them to be. They could be the remnants of a fallen civilization, their actions driven by a need to survive just like us. The challenge now was to decide how to use this information, to continue viewing the memory thieves as a threat, or to attempt a new approach, one that could lead to understanding and coexistence. The assembly called to discuss our next steps. The murals from the ruins had not only unveiled a history, but also opened a door to potential understanding. As we gathered, Commander Mitchell initiated the discussion. We stand at a crossroads, he began, his voice resonating with the significance of the situation. How we choose to move forward will define our future on this planet. The debate that followed was intense. Some colonists, led by Carlos, argued for maintaining our defensive stance. Our priority is the safety of the colony. We can't risk everything on a presumption of peaceful coexistence. Others, influenced by Dr. Reed's insights, advocated for a more diplomatic approach. The memory thieves might be the key to truly understanding New Oasis. We have an opportunity to turn a potential threat into an ally, she argued. I found myself torn. The prospect of understanding and possibly coexisting with the memory thieves was tantalizing, but the risk it posed was undeniable. Bella, sharing my turmoil, voiced her thoughts. Whatever decision we make, we must not forget that our actions have consequences for us and for them. The turning point came unexpectedly. During the assembly, a scout rushed in, breathless with urgency. We have a situation at the forest's edge. One of the memory thieves. It's different. It's communicating. The news sent a ripple of shock through the room. Without hesitation, Commander Mitchell, along with a team of us, including Dr. Reed and Carlos, hurried to the site. There, at the forest's boundary, stood a memory thief, its black eyes fixated on us. But this time, there was something different. Projected in front of it, seemingly through some form of technology we had not seen them use before, were images. 
The images were a chaotic blend of scenes, some depicting the planet's ecosystem, others showing the memory thieves and the ancient civilization living in harmony. But it was the last series of images that held us spellbound. They showed the cataclysmic events, the disasters that had befallen the planet and the ancient civilization's downfall. The memory thief remained still, its gaze almost pleading. It was a moment of profound realization. We were not facing mere predators. We were facing the remnants of a once great civilization seeking to connect, to share their story. The unexpected twist was a revelation that reshaped our understanding of New Oasis. The memory thieves, the beings we had feared, were in truth guardians of the planet's history, carrying the memories of a lost civilization. The path forward was now clear. We would not only survive on New Oasis, we would learn from its past, coexist with its present inhabitants, and together, perhaps, build a new future. The colony's leadership, recognizing the need for a new approach, initiated diplomatic efforts with the memory thieves. Dr. Reed, with her deep understanding of the planet's ecology and the newfound historical context, played a key role in these efforts. She developed a communication system, using the technology that the memory thief had shown us to interact with them. As communication improved, a symbiotic relationship began to form between the colonists and the memory thieves. We learned that they were indeed the guardians of the planet's history, their actions driven by the instinct to preserve the memories of their fallen civilization. The memory thieves shared knowledge of the planet's ecosystems, which proved invaluable for our agricultural and ecological efforts. In return, we shared our technological advancements, aiding them in preserving their remaining history and culture. Over time, the colony flourished, becoming a hub of interspecies cooperation and learning. The once feared memory thieves were now our neighbors, our teachers, and in some ways, our friends. We had not only survived on New Oasis, we had found a way to thrive together.